Okay, so here we have a simple SIS system. Okay. We have uh, a classic first order delay by which infected people recover and they lose their immunity and, and, and go back to susceptible. They have no persistent immunity. They go back to susceptible. And then we have a, a, an equally classic um, uh, random mixing um, of, of uh, susceptibles and infectives here where people who are susceptible of a certain number of contacts per day, uh, a, a fraction of them given by the fractional prevalence are deemed infective, and each of them has a certain probability of, of transmitting from that infective uh, to the susceptible. So yeah. the equations um, that this boils down to are as follows, right? Um, for infective, there's an inflow reflecting new infections. Again, C is this contacts per day. So a susceptible is contacts with C people total per day, say 100 per day. Let's suppose I over N is the fraction of the population that's infective. Let's suppose that's 50%. So that'd be infective divided by total population, say 50%. Then the susceptible is contact with 100 times 0.5 or 50 people per day, right, um, who are infective. And each of those people confers to infect this susceptible. The idea is each of these people confers a beta, a chance beta of, of um, um, getting infected. So this whole thing is the force of infection, C times I over N times beta. And um, that's a per day chance of getting infected. You multiply by S and that gives the number of infectives per day, right? This is a rate here, this, this uh, force of infection is, has a rate, it has a rate, chance per day. And so multiply by the, by the number of susceptibles to get the number of susceptibles per day that are going here, right? Yep. And then again, first order delay, infectives uh, go to recoveries um, with I over tau. So if their mean time in the infective state, let's say we're 10 days, 10% 10 of them would go every day. Right, um, I over ten. Right, um, uh, so they'd have a mean time in this state of tau. Yeah, um, and uh, because uh, you know the the flow of new infections comes from susceptible. This is the minus, and the flow of recoveries goes to susceptible. Plus, these two are just opposites of each other. Right. Um, yeah. This one is just the negative of this one and vice versa, right? That's right. Um, okay, so take advantage of that. Um, uh, we'll be straightforward. So basically we realized, okay, this total population, just the number of susceptible plus the number of infective. Um, and so we can express this as just minus this. Um, uh, so S dot, the, the derivative of S, Yep. Uh, you know, if you, if you take this, take the derivative of each of each side, um, and you take the derivative of this, it's just the sum of the derivatives of each. Uh, it's s dot plus i dot equals n dot um, equals zero, and so s equals minus i, which is exactly what we see here, right? Yep. This is just minus that. Okay. Um, so fundamentally. Uh, all we have to do is solve for one of these, um, and then we can easily um, uh, solve for the other. So we need we need to solve for a situation where this model's in balance. This model being in balance means that S dot equals zero and I dot equals zero, right? Yep. Because S is just given by minus I dot, we can, all we need is minus I, is I dot equals zero and S dot will be equal to zero, right? Um, yep. So, here we can um, we can solve for this. So we have this system to solve, right? It's just this guy here, yeah. right? Um, and what I was saying is that if you're solving this equals zero, meaning that that the uh, number of people effective is not going up, it's not going down, its rate of change is zero. Um, uh, we have this, and and uh, basically there's 
uh, we set this equal to zero, we need to solve for when we when we set these things equal to zero in order to find the equilibrium. What we're doing is we're solving, we're asking what is the state of the system, in this case, the value of S and I, at which this system will be in balance, okay? What's yep. the state? What's the number of people here? And what's the number of people here at which it will be in balance? And we're actually looking for them in terms of formulas, in terms of formulas involving constants and, and parameters, okay? Mean time effective constant. So that's what we're gonna be doing. We're gonna be solving this for I to find I as some um, formula uh, in terms of C, beta, and tau, okay? Um, so there's two cases here, right? Um, we want to solve for this equal to zero. Well, there's two cases. One is, you notice I divides both these terms, right? So we yeah. could take I outside. And one possibility is, you know, uh, I itself equals zero, right? Um, yeah, that's I right. itself is equal to zero. This combination is equal to yeah. zero. So there's two cases. One I equals zero. Now, if I is not equal to zero, we know we can divide both sides by i here, right? That's right. And, and so we could divide this side by i, you know, this side by i, and that side by i. Yeah. Um, in which case, uh, we'll have a simpler expression here. So for i equals zero, well, uh, given that s plus i plus uh, s plus i equals n, given that the two of these sum up to the total population, um. Yeah. If I equals zero, it implies that S equals N, right? S yep. plus I equals N, and so S equals N minus I, and so if I is zero, S is equal to N, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, if I is not equal to zero, that's the case where we can divide through by these I's, right? Um, yep. right. On both sides, then, then we get this. Right, um, divided both sides by i. And we want to solve that, and and look, all we have is one state variable here, s, and we could solve for it in terms of these other constants. So we have this, and basically we could just rearrange this, move this guy to the right hand side, and then divide this side by this term here in front of the s and we yeah. got this right um this is uh this n flips up to the top here the c and the beta go down here right so it's n over c beta tau mm -hmm. that's right yeah. so this is for s we just solved sorry we solved this for s okay All right that's are right. you comfortable with that yeah that was right it's very and, and then i is equal since s plus i equals n, i equals n minus s, right? And it's just yeah. the rest of of it, right? So That's right. s equals this, i equals n minus s, and which is that, that, which is is this. Now, just look a bit deeper. This c beta tau is recognizable um, for this model. Uh, c beta tau is the number of contacts susceptible as per day, or say, consider an effective number of contacts they have per day times the probability per discordant contact of transmitting times tau, the mean time effective. That's exactly the number of people that an infective would infect before they recover in an otherwise susceptible population. If everyone around them is infective, they'll have this in, oh, initial yeah. infective will have contact with, oops, sorry, um, this whoa, this many contacts per person per day, say 100 people in total. If, if they're right. the very first effective, everyone else is, 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 is susceptible. They have yeah. contact with 100 susceptible people per day. Each of those 100, they have a chance of beta of infecting, right? Yeah, that's right. At 100 times beta. Um, in you know people infected per day c times beta right um people per day that they're going to infect and 
on average, and then times the mean time infected, the, the, the number of days that they're infected, right? Yep. So maybe they infect, you know, if, if their probability of transmitting per discordant contact is, let's say, 4%, and they have contact with 100 people per day, they infect on average four people per day, 0.04 times 100. Yep. And then let's suppose they're sick for 10 days, right? Um, then four, four people they infect the first day, four people the second day, four people the third day is the idea. And by the time they recover, the idea is that um, they infect 40 people, you know, Got um, four people per day. We're ignoring the fact we're assuming a big population, so they're not, it's not like they're, the people they affected early won't be available to infect later. It's it's just, they're, they're mixing with enough people. So R0 is C beta tau for this model. So we can express the number susceptible in equilibrium and the number who are infective in equilibrium, the state of the model when it's in equilibrium for this case as being um, uh, a certain, uh, as having a certain fraction susceptible, um, yeah. the fraction one over R zero of the population, one over R naught, and the rest being infected. Um, and this makes sense because with this fraction of the population susceptible, that's precisely going to be the, um, the, the fraction that's needed to make sure that each infective infects only one person before they recover. Because only, they, they would normally infect, if everyone was susceptible, they'd infect C beta tau people. But if, if only one over C beta tau people are, around them are susceptible, they'll infect one person before they recover which is of what course. happens in endemic equilibria. So these are two equilibria. This is what's called the endemic equilibrium where the infection stays around. And this is called the disease-free equilibrium where the disease um, I equals zero. is basically died out. It's, it's not, it no longer exists. I is zero and everyone's susceptible. These are Got the it. two equilibria for this system. Okay, those are Got the it. two. Those are the two situations in terms of number of susceptibles and effectives in which this situation will be a balance. Number one, everyone is here. No one's getting infected. No one's recovering. Or one over, see beta tau, one over contacts per person per day times probability of transmission per discordant contact per mean time infective is here and the rest are here. And people are getting effective, but they're recovering at the same rate. And so it's imbalance. Okay. I'm just, yeah, now I understand. Okay. Yep. Yep. Thank you.